Okay, how's it going, everybody? So we're gonna read some more Xi Jinping today. This is, um, you know, from his uh, from his book, The Governance of China. And this is from the chapter, Economic Development. And the particular section we're going to read is The Invisible Hand and the Visible Hand. This was May 26, 2014. So let's go ahead and get into this. So this has a note here, uh, main points of the speech at the 15th group study session of the political bureau of the 18th C CPC Central Committee, which Z presided over. Let's go ahead and get into this. We should let the market play the decisive role in allocating resources while allowing the government to better perform its functions. This is a theoretical and practical issue of great importance. A correct and precise understanding of this issue is very important to further the reform and promote the sound and orderly development of the socialist market economy. We should make good use of the roles of both the market, the invisible hand, and government, the visible hand. The market and the government should, co should complement and coordinate with each other to promote, to promote sustained and sound social economic development. The third plenary, plenary se session of the 18th CPC Central Committee pointed out that economic structural reform is the focus of continuing the reform comprehensively. The underlying issue, the underlying issue, uh, it moved to another thing, sorry. The underlying issue is how to strike a balance between the functions of the government and the role of the market and let the market play the decisive role in allocating resources and the government better perform its functions. The proposal to let market play the decisive role in allocating resources is a breakthrough in our party's understanding of the laws governing the development of socialism with Chinese characteristics, as well as a new achievement in the, in the cynicization of Marxism. It symbolizes that the socialist market economy has entered a new stage. To let the market play the decisive role in allocating resources and the government better perform its functions, we must have a good understanding of the relationship between the role of the market and that of the government, which represents a core issue in our economic structural reform. The third plenary secession of the 18th CPC Central Committee changed the market's role in allocating resources from basic to decisive. Although only one word was altered, the market's role was redefined. Decisive role is a continuation and extension of basic role. Letting the market play the decisive role in allocating resources and letting the government better perform its functions are not contradictory. It does not mean that the market can replace the government's functions, nor vice versa. Actually, this is an effort to keep our economic reform targeted at existing problems. For more than two decades, our socialist market economy has been developing. Yet there are still quite a number of problems and drawbacks that inhibit the vitality of market entities and prevent the laws of the market and value from fully playing their roles. If these problems are not solved properly, it will be difficult to establish a well-developed socialist market economy, further transform the development model and adjust the economic structure. We should remain committed to the reform to establish and improve the socialist market economy and bring the reform to a deeper and wider level. We should reduce the government's direct involvement in resource allocation and its direct interference in microeconomic activities. We should step up efforts to develop a uniform market system characterized by openness and, order, and orderly competition and set fair, open, and transparent market rules. The government should refrain from getting involved in the economic activities that the market can regulate effectively and let the market do what the government is not supposed to do so that the market can play its role of maximizing the effectiveness and efficiency of resource allocation and enterprises and individuals can have more room to develop the economy and create wealth with vigor and vitality. Scientific macro control and effective governance are the intrinsic requirements for giving full play to the strength of the socialist market economy. To ensure that the government better performs its functions, we should transform government functions, further the reform of the administrative system, use new administrative methods, improve the macro control system, and enhance the monitoring of market activities. We should strengthen and improve public services and promote social fairness, justice, and stab stability, as well as common prosperity. Governments at all levels should exercise administration strictly in accordance with the law and, conscien and, con and conscience con conscientiously fulfill their responsibilities. The government should manage well all matters that fall within its purview and appropriately delegate powers should be delegated. The government should make resolute efforts to avoid overstepping its bounds or failing to play its due role. We should uphold the party's leadership and let party play its role as the leadership core in exercising overall leadership and coordinating all efforts. 
This is an important feature of our socialist market economy. Over the last three decades, since the introduction of the reform and opening up policy, we have made marked achievements in our social and economic development, and the people's living standards have improved noticeably. These successes are attributable, to, are attributable to the fact that we have firmly upheld the party's leadership and given full play to the roles of party organizations at all levels and of all party members. In China, the party's strong leadership is the basic guarantee for the government to play its due role. While comprehensively continuing the reform, we should uphold and develop our political advantages and use them to guide and push forward the reform. We should motivate all the people and make constant effort for a better socialist market economy. In the new situation today, officials at all levels, especially leading officials, should continue to learn through practice, put what they have learned into practice, study new problems, and draw new experiences. They should learn to correctly use both the, quote, invisible hand and the, quote, visible hand, and become experts in balancing the relationship between government and the market. Okay, so there you have, that's uh, the invisible hand and the visible hand. So that is... Uh, um, Let's see here, May 26, 2014. It's a very important piece, understanding, you know, what's, what socialist, uh, you know, socialist market economy is. Um, and, you know, it's understanding what socialism is. That's is ultimately that. A lot of people have this um, misconception here in the, in the capital, under the capitalist state of, you know, that in, in the West, that markets only come from capitalism. And it's like, no, markets have been here since the beginning of time. Anytime there's been an exchange between, between people, that, that, that's, a, that's what markets are. There has to be some sort of exchange there. You can't, you're not going to get rid of the markets, just like you're not going to get rid of some form of a state. Just, you know, I mean, I, I honestly would picture a state disappearing before a, a market, um, you know, because a, a market is ultimately what people need to live and a state is to make sure that the market is there to not be demolished, you know, or to not be uh, treaded upon. Now, the difference between that and the United States is that when a market is capable of buying out the government, such as through things like lobbyism, like uh, basically any sort of, you know, interconnection. And there's no laws to say stop and uh, say an FDA uh, head, head advisor from leaving and then being on the like main council of the Pfizer Corporation, like, you know, that's that's clearly a that's a for-profit corporation having some interest inside of the government, and the government is no longer on top of the um, no longer on top of the market itself. And when that happens, well, the government becomes a part of the market under the market, and then that market is, is no longer a market at that point. It is a monopoly. It's where it can and it now goes and takes more and more government. And our 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 government itself is under a monopoly, you know, and other, it takes as many as many. Um, many governments as it can until it reaches a true people state a socialist democracy um and that's that's what we have in china you know so um i mean and it's also just a constant process it's kind of the way the world is turning because with this you know when you tie the government to the workers themselves which are who are the main people who forward our society or not the main they are the they are what forward our society without them we have no production and therefore we have no society so they you know um the government the whole purpose of just that authority, that physical authority that the government is, is to make sure that people are able to work, to continue to work and not be treaded upon. But if that government gets bought out by, you know, somebody who is, um, you know, taking out of a market that, are, that is not contributing to the labor, well, now that market is above the government and it's no longer a market, it's a monopoly. That's something a lot of people don't really understand about what exactly socialism is. Socialism is a form of state. It doesn't just abolish capitalism overnight. Uh, the idea of capitalism is, you know, the uh, it's an economical form that moves capital from here to there, and it's where the whole world is going to be for a while, probably the entirety of our lifetime, because that's where we're that's where we're coming from, you know. Uh, but socialism is different than a socialist state is different than a capitalist state, and that that capital no longer dictates the government, but rather the the laborers do themselves. You tie you have uh, worker councils. And that's what, you know, makes the government happen from the workers up, you know, all the workers make society go forward. And so, yeah, a um, little, little explanation of what socialism is, according to, you know, uh, the Marxist Leninist, Marxist Leninism, you know, I, I strongly recommend reading State and Revolution by Lenin is a very, especially the first chapter in the preamble is a very, um, 
it's, it's, a, it's probably one of the mo more clear definitions of, of what this is, of what a socialist state is, or what a Marxist-Leninist state is, you know. So, uh, yeah, well, thank you all for tuning in, you know. Um, y'all can follow me online, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Tumblr, Medium, all of these Marxists saw. Go follow me there. Y'all have a great day. Do that, I go with.